Hi, it's Vlad, DevInsideU.com. In my previous video, we talked about how important it is to reach a certain level of fluency in English. And in this video, the Captain Obvious inside me would like to talk about the importance of reading. Before we begin, I would like to get something off my chest. I simply hate reading. I never liked it, and when I was a kid, my mother would force me to uh, read a chapter of some children's book before letting me to go out and play with my friends. And look at me now, I'm 30 years old and I still hate reading, so it didn't quite work. I mean, seriously, not letting me go out and play with my friends, this is cruelty to children. Having said that, these days I'm reading all the time, exclusively educational literature though. I still don't like it, but I just have to. As I mentioned in this video, we live in the age of information. Think about it, even taking all the classical literature out of the picture, there's still Facebooks and Instagrams and Twitters with all the lolcats and memes that need to be read and scrolled and swiped. No, hold on, that, that, that's not a thing. Even our communication is 99% of the time text-based. Think about it, when was the last time you called someone before asking them in a text message first if they had time? Text is everywhere. Anyway, these days I'm reading around 7 books per year, and it doesn't sound like much, but believe me, for someone who doesn't like to read, it's a lot. Seriously though, entertainment literature aside, the only reason I read is because there is no faster way of getting information. I swear to god, I will stop reading as soon as somebody invents this machine from the Matrix movie that allows a direct upload of information into my brain. But until then, I guess I will just have to keep reading. Now that we've established that reading isn't going anywhere anytime soon, whether we like it or not, here are the 6 reading related things that I think are important. Number 1, and this hopefully comes as no surprise, when you will stuff, or Bing, or whatever rocks your boat, do it in English. You will most likely find the answers in blogs or the official pages of that thing that you're looking for, or of course on the very famous question and answer site for programmers called Stack Overflow. In any case, the answer is most likely in English, because the people on the other side want exposure. They want points, followers, subscribers, which reminds me. To reach more people, they write blogs, tutorials, and answer questions in, you guessed it, English. Simply because most people speak English. Alright, enough about English. At least in this video. Number 2. 99% of the time, you will find your answers in the corners of the internet. But if you don't, you will have to read code lots of it, and more often than not, it won't be pretty, and very likely it will also be undocumented. These days, a lot of code is open source, which means that you can just grab it and do whatever you want with it. The code bases usually contain information about licensing, so please make sure to read the license before you use someone else's code to build your next big thing. I feel like this is an appropriate time to mention that when you will write code in the future, think about this. You write code only once but everyone, including the future you, will read it many, many times. So optimize it for reading instead of for writing. But that's a topic for another video. For now, just let this sink in. Number three, books. Be extremely cautious about books. Here's the thing. There are some very well-known authors in our industry, and there are plenty of very good books about established frameworks and tools. But we also have gazillions of new books coming out every day. Why? Because there are a bunch of new frameworks and tools that come out every day. Why? Because our industry is super young and we pretty much have no idea what we're doing. Seriously, I kid you not, almost literally every day there is a new blog with a title. Here's what's wrong with technology X, therefore you should use the technology Y. And then they take their sweet time to explain why Y is so awesome, and they forget to mention that in reality they only fixed one problem with X and introduced 10 new problems with Y. Now someone else discovers Y and goes, Hey, I think Y is super cool, so I'm gonna learn it and I'm gonna write a book about it. And now they find a publisher who helps them to publish the book iteratively, which is a fancy way of saying that you get the chapters as they're written. And now you come along, buy this book that is not even written yet for a technology which is in its infancy, which is probably gonna be replaced with technologies that literally tomorrow. <laughs> it easily takes a year to write a decent technical book. Seriously. Books for new frameworks and new tools simply don't work as a media in our industry, so beware of them. However, as I already mentioned, there are books out there which are considered classics. The information in them is pretty much timeless because they're not about frameworks or tools, 
There are about core concepts behind them. I do know quite a few of them, but these are not beginner books. I'm not saying that there aren't any good beginner books out there. I'm just saying that I didn't stumble on them when I was learning and therefore I would really like to avoid recommending anything. There is this one book that I would love to mention. It's like the Bible for programming, but I won't because I didn't read it as a beginner. I read it a few years after I started programming. This book is very detailed and fairly technical, which is why I'm afraid that it might scare you off. Therefore, I'm not even gonna mention its name, but I'm gonna for sure mention it in one of my future videos, so stay tuned. Number four, don't worry about learning everything about everything. And I honestly don't even have much to say about this. Not only is it impossible to know everything, it is also completely unnecessary. Nobody likes the jack of all trades. And by the way, from now on, I'm going to use the words learning and reading interchangeably. Number five, in contrast to number four, don't waste your time learning the tools and frameworks in depth unless you're using them for work, of course. However, if you have the time, feel free to touch as much as possible. Getting out of your comfort zone will help you with the technology that you use daily because the concepts behind them always share a thing or two. In fact, it's more like 83% that are being shared, 83 being the number that I always use when I make up statistics. I read a tutorial or a blog or watch a video or build something small. I'm talking about a weekend investment. Once I start making tutorials about all the things, you will quickly realize how little knowledge and time is required to become productive in a tool like an IDE or an editor or a build tool or even an entire operating system. Number six, which is probably the most important one so far, do not underestimate a few minutes in a day. You have a computer in your pocket always have some book on it or a backlog of links to articles or blogs. It usually takes less than 15 minutes to read a blog. This video takes less than 10 minutes to watch. You can listen to a podcast when you're cleaning the kitchen. There is always the bus that you miss or a friend that is coming late to a date or you're standing in the mall and the queue is super long. All of this time sums up to quite a lot. Don't waste it. All right, these were my six tips for reading. Thumbs up if you like reading and thumbs up if you read a lot even though you don't like it. It's Vlad, see you next time.